All right, we're back again here on Study Ball, and we're finishing up our Packers Cardinals 09 wild card playoff game. Score is 45 to 45 with 146 to go in the game. We've got the football, we've got one last opportunity to score. We're feeling like, man, they haven't stopped us all day. They're not going to stop us now. We've got a chance, and you've got to wrestle with some different things in your mind. Of course, you're in the playoff game. You want to go win this game now. You got two minutes to go. What you can't do, don't make that big mistake because obviously the other team scored 45 points as well. They're doing a lot of good things offensively. So it's that fine balance as a quarterback and a play caller to go, okay, we got to be aggressive because we want to win this game. We're not playing for overtime, but we can't make one of those critical, dumb mistakes at this point in the game and give the game away to the opponent. So here's the scenario, 45 45, fourth quarter, 146 to go. We've got the ball on our own 20-yard line, 21-yard line. See what we can do in a classic two-minute drill. So we're going to run a play. Again, QB confidential. We've got this in our playbook, play we call pick. Little seam out here, corner route by our outside receiver. Flat by our inside receiver and a stick by number, uh, number two. There, so we're trying to high low outside if we get cover two. If we get man, we get opportunities to get a little bit of a rub. They do a nice job of passing this off. Playing two man over the top of it as we expect. Now you got your shot. That stick, tight little window, able to get a nice easy completion to start this thing off. From there, we've got a corner route here and a return route back on this side. So if everything gets covered up and they're playing man and it's real tight there, Got a chance for a man beater over here, but more importantly, all that stuff clears out. Have a chance for Larry coming back on the return route if I don't have anything to the front side. Get yourself a completion. That's what it's all about early in a two-minute drill. All right, so we're moving. Now we're having a little bit of confidence. All right. Penalty right there. Set us back five yards. All right, this is one of my favorite plays in this game. A lot of great plays in this game. So you see Packers are in a 3-4 defensive front right here. And we've got another one of these five out free releases. So the back's going to be coming out here. So we're always going to be hot when they bring two off the front side. In this particular case, this is Charles Woodson right here. Love Charles Woodson. Uh, Hall of Famer. Uh, went into the Hall of Fame this year. One of the greatest players I played against. Tremendous instincts. And I often say that there's times when you're playing against guys with great instincts that you have to take advantage of their instincts. You have to use their strengths against them. So on this particular play, you're going to see that Charles Woodson blitzes on this play. I'm looking at him eye to eye. I'm looking at him right in the eye because what I know about Charles is that if he thinks I'm going to throw the football, he's going to use his instincts and he's going to slow down. He's going to try to jump up, knock the football down, see what I'm doing with the football. So He's coming from this left side. I've got a hot to that left side because he's going to be a free hitter on me if he keeps coming. I see him, look him in the eye, see him hesitate. That, hesitate, that hesitation was enough for me to go, okay, don't have to throw it hot out the front side. I kick all the way back to the back side to Stevie Breston and hit him on a big in route that really sets us up for an opportunity to score. And it's really just going, hey, I know my opponent. I know how great he is. Let me try to use his strengths against him Look him in the eye, see how he's going to react. He tried to react with his instincts. I tried to use that against him, and we were able to get the big play on this particular situation. So here we go. Take a look. You'll see the pressure coming from the front side. Here it comes. Here, Charles Woodson's going to be free. We got our back going to the flat. My normal situation, because of what they're doing, is to have to get this ball out hot. They're rolling down, trying to run to a cover two look here. So. If I'm trying to throw this flat hot, this corner's coming up to try to steal it. So a nice job here showing this. Now you see the corner chase this, so I probably would have been able to hit my hot there anyways. But here's what I'm talking about. Watch Charles. See how he slows down? He goes to hit the back. He hesitates and he's trying to jump up. Just that amount of time seeing him do that allows me to get back here to Stevie Breston as these guys are trying to rotate late. They leave the middle of the field because they've got this zone dog from the front side. So these guys have to run to their spots. Middle of the field's wide open. I get a chance to buy me an extra second right there, turn, hit Stevie down the middle, 
And now we're setting ourselves up for a big play. All right, not sure why that last play cut off wouldn't let me show the end of that play, but uh, he set us up on the 50-yard line here, and we're continuing to roll with just over a minute. You see it right there, 45-45 on the 49-yard line with just over a minute to go. All we need is a field goal to win this thing. Okay, so coming back to this side, we're running a play that we called Ohio, which was a go in and out. Normally, we like this. Uh, when this corner is off and he's carrying. So in this particular case, they've been playing a lot of two-man. I expected this guy to turn and run. So I thought I had a great matchup one-on-one -on -one out here, be able to complete the ball, get out of bounds, stop the clock in this particular case. Up to the top, you see we come run the same thing. we got the stick concept, little stick right here, back coming out of the backfield, running a flat over there. Probably would have had an opportunity to that side as well. A little coaching note here, anytime you're running a stick, we really want you to push hard inside and seam, then jump outside and run your stick. The reason we do that is because you'll see this linebacker is running to cover the back. So if we can get down in here and force him to at least go up over the top, gives you a little bit of separation. You can hit the flat and you get a nice play against man-to-man -man coverage as well. But as I said, I was expecting two man. I was expecting everything showed me that he was going to turn and run. I was going to get early out here. The last second, Williams comes off, sees this. Now I'm able to hit the whole shot and beat the safety. Ready for that adjustment. Boom. Hit it on his back shoulder, protect him from the safety, get a nice completion and out of bounds. All right, so here we go. A lot of confusion over here. Come back here and you see we're running the same play to this side, a little flat, a little stick, the go route out here, run an under combination back to this side, going fast here. See a little bit of confusion, I think, by the Packers defense, but what I see is one, two, three, four guys to the weak side. And we've got a five-man protection. We get four guys to the weak side, there's no way that we can pick up all of those guys to the back side. We expect three of our guys to slide back there. So they, if they, as long as they just bring three, we're good to go. These two guys will stay front side. I got no issues. In this particular case, like I said, I think they were confused. And this guy's trying to run up over, which would have set us up fine. But because we were going fast, they end up bringing all those guys to the weak side. I got a free hitter. I recognize that. So I'm just going to fade to the front side. Not ideal, because I see this corner starting to squat and come jump this flat. If I was able to read this initially, this guy's getting over late. Would have had a chance to hit Stevie Breston for a shot down the sideline with that corner coming off. But with the pressure, just fall over there, get a completion, trying to set up, set up ourselves for a field goal. Not even worried about getting a touchdown and taking any chances with the football right here. All right. Again, all about getting a field goal. Be smart with the football. We come back with the plays that have been successful so far. We're going to come back with that same thing. Stick to this side. Got a shot there. Again, man-to-man. -man. They've seen it enough. We're into the short side. They actually jump over this and carry it pretty well, cover it pretty well. Now we've got double slants back to this side. What I'm really trying to hit is fits out here. But with them playing two-man, makes it really, really tough because they're usually sitting hard inside don't want to force anything right here. So as I come off, knowing they're bringing a little bit of pressure, my whole goal is just get the ball out and get a completion. And right here, Early does a nice job of sticking and getting inside leverage. My goal, just put it on his body. These inside slants, just put it on his body. And you see right here, exactly what I expected. This guy jumping hard inside is not going to let Larry get back to the inside. So now I'm just trying to get a completion and get us closer for a field goal. Bang, a little stick, nice job by Early, played a great game. Then he runs through the tackle, sets us up inside the 20-yard line for a field goal. All right, there you go. That is the breakdown of that game, every pass that we took in that game. I know, you want to know what happened uh, after that catch by Early Doucette, putting us inside the 20. Unfortunately, missed a field goal from inside the 20. Game would go into overtime, and you're probably saying, okay, how did you win in overtime? Or what happened in overtime if you never threw another pass? Well, what happened is, that the Packers got the ball first, 
Aaron Rodgers missed a deep throw where he had a chance to close out the game. They missed that throw. The very next play, we brought a blitz. We were able to force a fumble, able to catch that fumble out of the air. Carlos Dansby got into the end zone, gave his classic Cardinal dance, and we were able to move on to the next round, winning that game 51-45. to All the offense that you saw in that entire game, and the game is dictated by a defensive play. That's why we call it the ultimate team game because it takes everybody to win classic games like that one. But I hope you enjoyed this little series, able to take a peek into my life, my career, and I'm able to give you a little bit more direction knowing exactly what we were trying to do on every play against the defense that we saw. I'm going to keep this going a little bit as we prepare for the season. I'm going to break down a couple more of my games. You guys can shoot me suggestions on games you want to, uh, to see me break down. Maybe I'll ask my son. Maybe I'll just pull out one of my bad games and show you that, hey, just like everybody, it's hard to play this position. You got to be on top of everything, and little mistakes can cost you no matter how much success you've had throughout your career. Hope you're having fun. See you next time on Study Ball.